Hi, I'm recording this video for people following my Code Lesson Ruby course. So hopefully you've got Ruby set up now and editor set up and so on. So whatever you're using now, I'm using Ubuntu Linux in this example, but if you're using Windows or OS X, it should be fine as well. Uh, you should be able to open a command prompt or a terminal in either of those. Uh, we should have covered that in the previous guides. I'm just going to open a terminal here in Ubuntu and very quickly show you IRB. Now IRB stands for Interactive Ruby um, or some people call it Immediate Ruby and um, basically whatever you type in does actually happen immediately so uh, let's just jump into this basically bring up your command prompt and type IRB and press enter and you should be in. Um, if you haven't set Ruby 192 as your default um, under RVM uh, on Linux or OS X, then you might need to have typed RVM space 192 before this, but uh, let's assume everything's okay. So now we're in IRB, very simple. Um, this will look different on different setups, but here we just have the, the version of Ruby here on the left and then the line numbers on the right. So let's just get going and just try some really, really basic stuff in here. So if I just put a number in like 5, for example, that's a really simple expression. And we've looked at expressions uh, very briefly in uh, earlier guides. So 5, it brings back 5. And basically this line here is um, IRB's way of showing you what the result of a line is if you treat the whole line as an expression. So if I extend this just a bit further, 5 times 5 we get 25 for that. And you can extend this a little bit further and just go, you know, 5 times 5 plus 10 minus 30 and so on and so forth and uh, you end up with the um, relevant response. Although intriguingly, you'll notice if I do something like 10 divided by 3 um, where the forward slash is basically the um, symbol to do division you'll notice we get 3 and you think, well, hang on, that should be 3.333. And if actually I type 10.0 divided by 3, that's basically what we get. And the reason for this is that when we're just using numbers like 10 and 3, um, it's dealing with them as integers, and you get integer division as a result. Whereas when we introduce a floating point number, and that's like 10.0, um, Ruby then treats uh, you know, the whole thing as a, a floating point uh, expression. So there's a bit more we can do with this. We can put uh, text strings, and strings are basically just sort of data objects that contain text. We can put them straight in here, but you think, well, what's the point of that? Because it just <laughs> returns that anyway. Well, what we can then use is we can use what are called variables. So I can say name equals Peter, like so. And that just returns Peter as an, as an expression in its own right. But we now also have name is a variable that points to that object of Peter string. So if I just put name now, you'll see Peter comes back here. And this allows us to do some other things. We can now join two copies of that same string together. So name name becomes Peter Peter. And I can even do things like name two equals name plus name. So now we not only have name that contains Peter, we have name two that contains Peter Peter. Great fun. We can also do some other things uh, that Ruby adds into basic string objects. So we can do like name times five and you end up with the name repeated five times. And of course, we've already seen adding, but you can add in strings that are just uh, not necessarily linked to by variables that are just, you know, um, kind of immediate and raw straight here. So I can do name like that, and then we end up with Peter, Peter with a space in the middle. So for example, I could do first underscore name equals Peter, and underscores are a legitimate character in variable names. Often in Ruby, they used to uh, separate words within variables. Their variable names. So I've got first name equals Peter, last name equals Cooper, and then what I can do is first name, add a space, plus last name, and we end up with Peter Cooper. Of course I can extend on to doing other things. I can 
put in age, it was 21. I'm being very hopeful there. Um, and that returns 21. Now you think, okay, what if I want to add a string to some, you know, to a number, for example, or if I want to include a, a number a sh number within a string? Well, you'd think, okay, perhaps I can do um, first name um, has an age of plus age. And you want this to print out that says, Peter has an age of 21. Well, we run this, we get an error message. And... Early on, you get you can get a bit intimidated by these um, error messages in Ruby because they are usually quite long. But the basic crux of this is it's basically saying that you can't convert a fixed number into a string. And what that means is is that Ruby takes the number twenty one and tries to add that to this string that we've built up that already says Peter has an age of. But because it's a number, you can't just um, kind of use it in a numeric sense when you're adding it to text, what we have to do is we have to actually convert the number into a string form before using it. And if I just press the up arrow, this just uh, brings back the previous line. What I can add to the end here is dot two underscore s. Now this is a method, um, which is basically something that uh, manipulates or works upon the object. I can call the method two underscore s, which basically means to string, convert this to a string. So we convert the age, so 21 uh, goes from being a number 21 to being the string 2, 1, the digits, and then adds it on. So then we have P has an age of 21. And just to show you this in action, if I type in age, you see it's uh, just 2, 1 there. But to age 2 underscore string, uh, you see it's put the um, quotation marks around 21. So now it is a string. And you think, well, can we do the same the other way around? Well, we can. If I put 2-1 in a string and then go 2i, 2i converts it into an integer, we end up with 21. And you can see the difference here, because if I do 21 plus 21 as strings, you end up with a string of 2 one, two, one. Whereas if I now convert it into integers, we end up with 42, as you might expect from a, a 21 plus 21. So there's some other things we can do here. I don't want to go into too much depth, because you're going to be reading uh, Chapter 2 of Beginning Ruby next, which basically covers a lot of this similar ground, but also goes somewhat further. But I just wanted to show something a little bit more um, complex, just so you have a, a good idea. Um, I'm going to create an array. And an array is basically a list of other objects. And we're going to use um, this as a list of strings. So I'm going to create a variable names and it's going to point to an array. And arrays are defined, um, if you want to sort of define them in the flow of things, you use these square braces here. Uh, and then I'm going to put my strings inside. So I've got Peter. And I'll use commas to separate each element. So let's put Joe, Chris, and Jane. Close with that square bracket. Press enter, and then the list is uh, repeated back to me. And let's say I want to see what the first thing in the names list is. All I have to do is go names.first, and first is a method um, that's available to all arrays, and it returns the first element. I get Peter back, and you think, OK, can I do the same with last? You can, and um, arrays always stay, you know, in the right in that correct order. Um, unless I do something like this, for example, if I go names dot sort, you see it's now sorted them into alphabetical order, and you think, well, ha! Huh, what if I wanted to get hold of the first element in the names uh, array by alphabetical order? Well, I can actually chain these methods together, so I can say names dot sort dot first and then I just get Chris. And you could extend this to you know, any size uh, array, do whatever you want with this. So that's a very, very basic sort of overview of not just a few Ruby concepts, but IRB itself. There's a lot more to IRB than this, of course, but uh, a lot of that's covered in the book, and you'll discover it through experimentation and so on. So what you can do to finish your session in IRB now, rather than just close the terminal, which uh, can be a bit messy, if you type exit, and press enter, you're back at your command prompt, and 
I'm just going to type exit to finish off here. So, good luck with the chapter.